I have a wheelchair if you feel weary at all, Mrs. Kennedy. Oh, no, thank you, Mrs. Eisenhower. I feel fine. Okay, Eddie. The White House budget enables the First Lady to get by. Oh, yes. You could do with a lick of paint here and there, but uh, it's really very homey. You'll grow to love it. <laughs> Children especially, they love the Easter egg rolling. <laughs> mm. Ike and I have dinner on trays here every night. Ike loves TV. You like TV? Hmm. Uh, I don't get to see it that often. Uh, the food comes up from the kitchen. Yes, from down below. But um, there is a steam kitchen upstairs, and I've been known to heat things up, you know. By yourself? <laughs> oh, sure. And what's in here? Um, a dentist chair. Ah. If you have any trouble with your teeth, you can have a dentist come over from Walter Reed. Uh, well, uh, I hope you'll like living in Gettysburg. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> ah. I guess we'll miss our old home. Hmm. I can see why. Could you turn up the heater, please? I'm frozen. Oh, Betsy, have you ever seen such a dreary place? Well, it needs a, a bit of doing to it. A bit? It's terrible. It's just terrible. I don't know how we can be expected to live there. Well, it was just a little cold. I don't think a penguin could survive there. Did you see what I saw in the pool? What? I think that I saw a frog in there. You I'm didn't. serious. You I didn't. think I did. I didn't want to stay in there long enough to find out. The air was so terrible. It must be a health hazard. <sighs> well, if we're gonna have to live there, which I guess we are, we have got a lot of work to do. And if I'm not allowed to do it, we'll just have to get Jack to postpone the inauguration. <laughs> Ted, let us never negotiate from fear. Out of fear. Out of fear. But let us never fear to negotiate. That's very good. Thank you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you mind out. He doesn't catch cold. Well, we just wait till we get to the White House. Isn't it warm? Oh, it's as warm as a garden in New Alaska. Ted, <laughs> let both sides heed. Unite to heed. Unite to heed in all corners of the world. The words of Isaiah. The command. The command of Isaiah. And what is the uh, command of Isaiah? Undo the heavy burdens. Undo the heavy burdens. And let the oppressed go free. Very good, Mother. It's too bad you're not giving the speech. This is going to take a long time. Not long. We're almost ready, Mrs. Kennedy. You okay? Well, no, not actually, Pierre. Can you try and speed things up? I'm, I'm not a model, you know? I might well, take a pretty good photo. You think so? Yeah. It's your job to see I do. Right. Where's Caroline? Caroline! Oh, oh she is. Dave, yes. please. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. Oh. All right. Nice. Let us begin. Can we clear away, please? We're ready to shoot. You can give us a big smile, sweetheart. Now what? Look right into the lens, please, everyone. Smile. That's nice. Look at those pretty eyes. That's wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> You, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, do solemnly swear. I, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, do solemnly swear. That you will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. That I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. And will, to the best of your ability. And will, to the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> Vice President Johnson, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chief Justice, President Eisenhower, Vice President Nixon, President Truman, Reverend Clergy, fellow citizens. We observe today not a victory of party, 
but a celebration of freedom, symbolizing an end as well as a beginning, signifying renewal as well as change. For I have sworn before you and Almighty God the same solemn oath our forebears prescribed nearly a century and three quarters ago. The world is very different now, for man holds in his mortal hands the power to abolish all forms of human poverty and all forms of human life. And yet the same revolutionary beliefs for which our forebears fought are still at issue around the globe. The belief that the rights of man come not from the generosity of the state, but from the hand of God. We dare not forget today that we are the heirs of that first revolution. Let the word go forth from this time and place to friend and foe alike that the torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans born in this century, tempered by war, disciplined by a hard and bitter peace, proud of our ancient heritage, and unwilling to witness or permit the slow undoing of those human rights to which this nation has always been committed and to which we are committed today at home and around the world. <laughs> Let every nation know whether it wishes us well or ill, that we shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe, in order to assure the survival and the success of liberty. <laughs> this much we pledge and more. To those people in the huts and villages across half the globe, struggling to break the bonds of mass misery, we pledge our best efforts to help them help themselves for whatever period is required, not because the communists are doing it, not because we seek their votes, but because it is right. If a free society cannot help the many who are poor, it cannot save the few who are rich. To those nations who would make themselves our adversary, we offer not a pledge, but a request that both sides begin anew the quest for peace before the dark powers of destruction unleashed by science engulf all humanity in planned or accidental self-destruction. Let us never negotiate out of fear, but let us never fear to negotiate. Let both sides explore what problems unite us instead of laboring those problems which divide us. Let both sides seek to invoke the wonders of science instead of its terrors. Together, let us explore the stars, conquer the desert, eradicate disease, tap the ocean depths, and encourage the arts and commerce. Let both sides unite to heed in all corners of the world the command of Isaiah to undo the heavy burden and let the oppressed go free. <laughs> All this will not be finished in the first 100 days, nor will it be finished in the first 1,000 days, nor will it be finished in the life of this administration, nor even perhaps in our lifetime on this planet. But let us begin. In the long history of the world, only a few generations have been granted the role of defending freedom in its hour of maximum danger. I do not shrink from this responsibility. I welcome it. I do not believe that any of us would exchange places with any other people or any other generation. The energy, the faith, the devotion, 
which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who serve it, and the glow from that fire can truly light the world. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. My fellow citizens of the world, ask not what America can do for you, but what together we can do for the freedom of mankind. My friends, President of the United States of America. <laughs>